Number 128. The graph below shows the cost of renting a vehicle as a function of the number of miles driven. Which of the following equations best describes the data represented by the graph? Now, in order to answer this question, you need to be familiar with linear equations. Here's a linear equation in slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis. In this case, that's going to be 20. Now, the slope is basically the rise over the run. Another way in which we can calculate the slope is by using this formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this point here, that's the y-intercept. The x value is 0, the y value is 20. And using the next point, the x value is 200, the y value is 30. So using these two points, we can calculate the slope. But keep in mind that b is 20. So we're going to call this x2 and y2. This is going to be x1 and y1. Now let's plug it in into that formula. y2 is 30, y1 is 20. x2 is 200, x1 is 0. So we have 30 minus 20, which is 10, over 200. Now we can cancel a 0. So this is 1 over 20. 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05. So now, we have not only the y-intercept, but we also have the slope. Now, let's go back to this formula. y is equal to mx plus b. c is on the y-axis, so we're going to replace y with c. The slope m is 0 0.05. The number of miles driven, that's on the x-axis, so we're going to replace x with m. And the y-intercept is 20. So thus we have this formula. C is equal to 0.05m plus 20. So answer choice A is the right answer. Number 129. A line in the xy plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 2 over 3. Which of the following points lies on this line? Let's draw a picture. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, and here is the origin. The coordinates are 0, 0. Now the slope is 2 over 3. The slope is basically the ratio between a rise over the run. So we can get the next point if we rise 2 units and run 3 units to the right. So we're going to travel up 2 units and over 3. So this will take us to the next point, which will have an x value of 3, let me write this somewhere else, and a y value of 2. Now we don't have the point 3, 2 in our answer, so we can find the next point. We're going to rise 2, travel 3 units to the right. And so the next point will be, if you add 3 to the x value, you'll get 6. And then if you add 2 to the y value, you'll get 4. Now we do have this answer. So answer choice D is the correct answer. Number 130. Which of the following linear functions represents the data in the table shown below? Now, what you need to understand is that y relates to f of x. They're the same. What we need is only two points, and with two points, we can write an equation or even a function. The first point is 4, 1. x is 4, y is 1. The second point we're going to use is 6, 4. We're going to say this is our x1 value, this is y1, this is x2, and y2. Our next step is to calculate the slope using this formula. So this is going to be 4 minus 1 over 6 minus 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, 6 minus 4 is 2.
now that we have the slope, we could use the point slope formula to get the function. So we're going to use y1 as 1, m is 3 over 2, x1 is 4, based on these values that we see here. Now let's distribute 3 over 2 to x minus 4. So we're going to have 3 over 2, x, and then 3 over 2 times negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Now the next thing we need to do is add 1 to both sides. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Now at this point, you could replace y with f of x. So we could say that f of x is 3 over 2x minus 5, which means b is the right answer. Number 131, a line in the xy plane passes through the origin and the points 3 comma b and b comma 48. What is the value of b? So what do you think we'll need to do in this problem? Go ahead and try it. Now a key expression is that the fact that this line passes through the origin. So we have an additional point. 0 comma 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the slope between the first two points and also between the last two points. So let's start by calculating the slope between the first two points. Let's call this P1 and P2. So it's going to be Y2 minus Y1. Let's call this X1, Y1, x2, y2. So this is going to be b minus 0 divided by x2 minus x1, which is 3 minus 0. So the slope is b over 3. Now, let's calculate the slope between the second and the third point. So we're going to say this is x1, y1, and this is x2, and that's y2. So y2 minus y1, that's 48 minus b x2 minus x1, that's b minus 3. Now keep in mind, this is going to equal to this slope that we have here. That is b over 3. So let's solve it. What we're going to do is cross multiply. So we're going to have 48 minus b times 3 is equal to b times b minus 3. Now let's begin by distributing the 3 on the left side. So 3 times 48, that's going to be 144. And then 3 times negative b, that's negative 3b. Here we have b times b, which is b squared. And this is also negative 3b. So adding 3b to both sides will cancel what we see here. So 144 is equal to b squared. Our next step is to take the square root of both sides. The square root of 144 is 12. Technically plus or minus 12, but only positive 12 is listed as an answer. So E is the right answer. Number 132. The cost C of an international phone call is represented by the equation C is equal to 0.15 M plus 2.25, where m is the number of minutes used. Which of the following statements is true? Is it A, the phone company charges 15 cents per minute for an international call? Is it B, the phone company charges $2.25 per minute for an international call? Or is it C, the phone company charges a one-time service fee of 15 cents to make the call, or D, none of the above. What would you say? There's two elements to this equation. There is the slope and the y-intercept. The y-intercept is a fixed number, so this would be the one-time service fee. The slope, that is multiplied by m. So the slope is going to be the cost for, it's going to be the amount that the company charges each minute. 
that is used during the phone call. So that is the cost per minute. So knowing that, the cost per minute is 15 cents because it's going to be multiplied by M, the number of minutes used. So A is the correct answer. The one-time service fee is $2.25. So clearly that's not C. And B doesn't match up with any of that. So A is the correct answer.